Welcome back to another exciting chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we are going to look at formal charges to determine which Lewis dot structure is more likely to occur in nature by looking at formal charges. Well, formal charges of an atom is basically a hypothetical charge of an atom. First, we have our given chemical formula. From there, we determine the Lewis dot structure. What happens when we have multiple valid Lewis dot structure? And that is where formal charges go to tell us which structure is more likely to occur in nature. Well, let's look at this. There are three specific factors. First of all, the molecule will want to have all the charges to be zero. So basically, all the formal charges on an atom need to be zero. And if an atom could not have a zero formal charges, then the non-zero need to be as small as possible in terms of nearest to the zero, okay? And if we have any negative formal charges, those negative formal charges need to be on a more electronegative element, okay? So we already learned that fluorine is the most electronegative as well as the halogen and that region of non-metals, okay? So now let's look at the formula to determine the formal charges. Basically, you take the Bain's electron, which we can get from the periodic table based on the group number, minus the bond pairs. Okay, remember, bond pair is this. One bond pair make a single bond, but a double bond is made from two bond pair. And lastly, a triple bond is made from what? Well, three bond pairs. And lastly, we are going to minus the unshared electron. This is the lone electron. And lastly, we also learned about polyatomic ions in the past. And here, we are going to relate to formal charges. And that is the sum of all the formal charges need to equal to the charges of that polyatomic ions. And we are going to look at that example in later part of the videos. So we are going to apply the formula to determine the formal charges of each atom. So in this case, for this particular atom, one right here, we have formal charges equal to what? Well, oxygen is in group 6A, so therefore it has six Bain's electron minus how many bond pair do we have? Three bond pair. And how many lone electron do we have? Two. So what is six minus three minus two? That is equal to plus one. There you go. And as you notice, for formal charges, the sign go in front of a number, okay? Where charges, the sign go after, okay? Now for oxygen, I'm gonna have what? So I have oxygen is four minus, what is it? One, two, three, four. We don't have any unshared electron, so in this case, it is zero, okay? And then for this oxygen, again, group six, okay? Six minus what? We have one pair, there you go. And minus how many lone electron? Minus six. So in this case, the total is minus one. There you go. And I'm going to circle the formal charges for you. Now, the next step is we have this one right here. We have six minus two. That's coming from the double bond. So again, and then one, two, three, four. And there you go. What do we have? We have zero right here. Okay. And here for oxygen, we have six minus one, two, three, four and we don't have an unshared, so therefore, this is plus two, okay? Now for carbon, we have four minus one, two, and minus four for the unshared electron. In this case, what's the answer going to be? Well, it is minus two. So the last one what we have in here is six minus one, two, and minus four for the unshared electron. So what do we get? Equal to zero. Here we have carbon. 4 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, that turns out equal to 0. And here we have oxygen, 6 minus 2 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, that's for the unshared electron, give us what? 0 as well. So if looking at the formal charge of all the three values dot structure, what do we notice? Well, we notice in this case, right, it's going to be this one right here. So most likely, in nature, you would see carbon dioxide exists in this form, okay? And as you can see, we follow the step where we put the least electronegative atoms in the center. This one and this one is very close, isn't it? Where carbon is less electronegative than oxygen. So with that common pattern, we can still see which of the Lewis dot structure that we can get it right the first time. So that is how we assign formal charges to each atom in a molecule to determine which valid Lewis dot structure is most likely to happen in nature. 
Now let's go back and look at this one right here. Again, in this case we have NO2 minus, and NO2 minus is a polyatomic ion, look like this right here. So I already fill out the formal charges. Notice we have minus one, we have zero, and zero. And if we have zero plus zero plus minus one, guess what we have? We have minus one as well. So again, the total formal charge is equal to the net charge of that particular polyatomic ions as well. And as always, if you have any question, take a picture of your work, put in the form, and we will help you from there. And we see you next, and we will see you next time on another exciting chemistry lesson.